All right, so we unbox our V3KE. First thing we pull out is the installation guide. The controller, touchscreen controller, just super cool to use. The cable, power cable. This is where our spool goes. It has also has the sensor that tells us when the spool runs out. And this is just our bag of tools and some filament that they give us. And another part for the spool feeder. That's where the spool sits on it. And then inside, or I guess underneath this other foam section, we have the arms of our machine, where it goes up and down, and then our bed. So, not a ton of things in the box, but fairly simple. And of course, the bed also has the cable attached to it. So we're gonna put that down. The first thing that we do is we put this on. So this one, this one side has a cable on it, so you need to plug it in underneath. So you're gonna pop it in the little hole right there. And then we flip it up on its side and we're gonna plug that in and then screw in both towers. So that just pins in just like that. Pretty simple to put in. And then there's just a few screws for this one too. One, two, and three. And we flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Three screws, they pop right in pretty easily. And everything came with the in the tool bag. There's these little Allen wrenches that fit all the screws, and there was a ton of different Allen wrenches in there actually. So for all the different size screws we have to use, so not too bad. There's also some foam pieces underneath the bed, and I eventually pull all those out too. I just didn't see them at first. And then we're screwing in this one axis over here, and this has just a couple screws, but the same thing. Just tie them in and use the Allen wrench and screw them in. It's really a pretty easy setup. Um, I found that to be pretty easy to do. And then our screen here goes right on this one side, on the right side, and you get three screws onto this as well. One, two, and three. And then we're gonna plug the screen in. It's just that same, has a cable right there, and you pop it right into the back of the screen. Pretty simple. The screen also has our USB plugs on the side that we'll use later for the camera. And this is the spool piece. I, I did realize if you looked at it, you could pop it right out. It pops in through that hole and then just slides back on and screws back on again. Pretty easy to do. And then this is gonna get screwed to the top of the machine. And then we're also gonna plug in the, the detector that tells us when we run out of spool and stops the printer from going. And that slides in right there. It's actually been pretty easy to use. It, it moves very well as the machine's moving back and forth and up and down. I haven't had any issues with that, so that's been kind of nice. So this up top just has two screws, pretty simple to put into. And like I said, we just plug this in. There we go. And then we have this big cable and this is gonna go right into the printer head here. So it has a little, there's a little thing you can kind of pop apart and then it, it pins in and then those pieces clamp back on top to really secure it to the print head. And then to really secure it, we're also gonna screw it in. So it's really not going anywhere, I hope. So those two screws are in, pretty easy to do. And then we're gonna flip it around. And on the back side, there is a, a little slot that lines up with a section on the cable that just says to pop it into that slot. Very easy to do. You kind of have to bend it just a little bit to get it in, and then it slides in either side. And then we gotta plug in this axis as well, which has its own cable. That pops out right there and just simply plugs in right there 
And then we plug in the one at the bottom. Just like, well, maybe do it the right way. There you go. And then really the important thing is doing the voltage. So we, I live in America, so we have 115 volts. You just pop a screwdriver in there and flip it. It's very simple to do. You plug it in and it's ready to go. So I plugged it in, it turns on. There's some basic setup things. You're gonna type in your language. It's gonna ask for your Wi-Fi. Um, there's also a section where you can scan a QR code and then connect it with your account online so you can control it in the app, which is something I really liked um, to be able to control it in the app. I can pull it up in the app and we'll look at that in a little bit. And then it just goes into its printer setup and kind of tests everything. It, it checks all the movement up and down, side to side. It gets hot, the nozzle gets hot. It just checks to make sure everything's working correctly. Um, and kind of bounces around. And one of the other things I liked about this printer as I was researching them was this auto leveling. Um, it goes through and has 20 spots, sorry, 25 spots that it checks on the bed and auto levels it. And um, it seems to help it when it's printing. So that's pretty cool. Setup's complete. And now we're going to put our spool in. This is just the test spool that they gave us. It goes up on top and then slides through there. And you actually see the light turn on. And that means that it's seeing something. So that's good. We cut it at a sharp angle, just like that, and then pop it in to the top there. You push back a little bit and shove it all the way down until it stops. And then you're gonna tell your printer to extrude and it'll pull it through. So for this one, I of course did the Benchy boat here and I had it just do the calibration again so it does and tops all 25 of those spots, gets hot, and gets ready to go. And there we go. So it starts printing. Um, this is definitely sped up. In just a second here, I'll slow it down and do actual speed. Uh, from what I understand, it's a pretty quick printer compared to the previous models for sure, but this right here is actual speed. Um, so that's, that's, it, that's it going right there. I was it was really cool to watch it print um, and kind of just the little details it's putting in there. There's like a hole in the back of the boat and a little bench and then at the end you get the little smokestack. So it was it was pretty cool to watch it. I think it took about 15 or 16 minutes to print the whole boat. So that was cool. And the thing I was really excited for was to watch it make the roof on top and then of course finish off with the smokestack. So it finished up the boat and it looks really good. It's got a lot of holes. It's got the steering wheel in there and I don't know, it was kind of a fun thing to print for the first print. So the next day I installed the camera. It's actually super simple to install. I thought there'd be more to it. You just plug it in. Um, I'll probably eventually print a little stand for it that kind of moves up and down with it. But this is what it looks like in the app. So once you have the app open, you can see it live on camera. And then I was also printing the shark here. And you can kind of see how it's running while it's printing the shark. This is in the next day. And then I will have a shot here from the camera where you can actually see it printing the shark. And this is what it looks like when you're just live on the camera. And it's in the app, it also tells you like the temperatures you're running at, the speed. And you can just watch it print, which I've done a few times. It's kind of fun to just watch it print from downstairs or somewhere else. It's just going there by itself. The camera wasn't a bad addition. So overall, for my first 3D printer, I don't, I'm don't. i learning. We're exploring. We're doing some different things. It's been kind of fun to try and create my own files, but with everything about it. So we went with this one, and I liked, like I said, the price. The Wi-Fi, the auto leveling, that was all kind of things that I really enjoyed about it. So I'm excited to see where this adventure takes me and where we go from here. Subscribe for more.